But the idea of millions of years of uninterrupted gradual change is now being challenged by many scientists. Astrogeologist Dr. Eugene Shoemaker at the Lowell Observatory was one of the team that discovered the Shoemaker-Levy comet. He disagrees with the creationist time scale, but his research on impact theories shows that dramatic catastrophic events have shaped the face of the Earth. The view that we have of the role of large impacts today actually challenges the old paradigm of uniformitarianism right to its roots. Indeed, the notion that comets might hit the Earth and produce catastrophic changes is an old one. It goes all the way back to Edmund Halley in the 17th century. And it was part of the background of the debate that occurred in the 19th century between the advocates of catastrophism on one hand and uniformitarianism on the other. It turns out in the 19th century, the uniformitarians won the debate at that time. But in fact, they were wrong, or at least partly wrong. And the catastrophists were partly right. So we really have to reassess this whole idea of uniformitarianism, which has been taken now for several generations to be an underlying principle of geology. It just simply isn't right. Gradualism is still the foundation of modern geology, but mounting evidence of catastrophism is causing geologists to revise the conventional theories. Creation scientists believe that the greatest catastrophic event in Earth history was a recent global flood that destroyed almost all life and shattered the continents. Their claims are supported by studies of local catastrophic events that can be observed today. We do know of catastrophes that occur today, uh, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, hurricanes, those sorts of things. And uh, we can certainly, in a sense, apply the same principle, the present is the key to the past, and we can actually look at uh, rock units and pro geological processes that are catastrophic in the present, and we actually see those features in the rock record. And that gives us a clue that maybe the, the past wasn't all that quiet, and when you've got fossil upon fossil upon fossil that show evidence of catastrophism, it begins to give you a different picture of the total geological record as somehow not being a slow and gradual thing, it points to a catastrophic past in the Earth's history. Under the fragile crust, Yellowstone National Park in the Northern Rockies is a seething cauldron of geothermal activity. Sometime in the past, powerful volcanic explosions blasted through a thousand square miles of rock, hurtling debris as far east as Kansas. At Yellowstone, several layers of petrified trees are found standing upright. How did extensive forests become fossilized? It's widely claimed that the trees were gradually fossilized where they grew millions of years ago. But a new theory developed by Dr. Stephen Austin at the Institute for Creation Research in San Diego suggests the trees may have been uprooted in a sudden catastrophe, swept away and rapidly buried. The creationist model was seen in action during the eruption of Mount St. Helens volcano in 1980, when thousands of trees were swept from the hillsides and deposited in Spirit Lake. One of the things that, that, that most puzzles me about the conventional way of thinking about the Earth is fossil deposits. Uh, the fossil forests here at Yellowstone are, uh, are, are distinct layers. We find petrified wood. Do those represent 27 distinct fossil forests which flourished millions of years ago? The signs at Yellowstone here used to say that. They used to say that there, there were countless tens of thousands of years involved with each of the forest layers and that, that uh, the whole rock strata sequence took 40 million years to form. But as we look at those fossil deposits, we see that they're similar to some of the things that, that happened at Mount St. Helens volcano. A whole series of upright uh, logs were deposited at Mount St. Helens in the bottom of a lake. And the mud flows at Mount St. Helens made uh, stratified deposits with upright logs embedded in the deposits. 
And each of these may look like it was a separate forest over many, many thousands of years, but this uh, process of redepositing logs creates what in our ordinary experience looks like would require millions of years. The modern thinking about this may indicate that catastrophic processes are better at making fossil wood deposits and, and even upright logs embedded in the rock strata than the slow and gradual processes are.